now you can see we can actually run iOS commands in here and I'll do a show IP in brief, excluding anything that has unassigned. A few moments later. So here's the dev box and we can SSH to this. Now this dev box is great because it is a Linux box. So if you're not familiar with Linux, guess what? You just got yourself a Linux machine that you can hop into and play around with. You know what else is great about this Linux box? You have Python. The first thing to do is go to developer.cisco.com. While you're here at developer.cisco.com, you can sign up for free. Let's take a look at what that's all about. You can use GitHub, Google, Facebook, WebEx meetings login, login with WebEx Teams. If you have a Cisco ID, you can log in using that. I have my Cisco ID, so I'll go ahead and log in here. Now on this page, I'm going to click on Sandbox. Then I'll go to Sandbox Catalog. This is the reservations that I have here. If you, if you were to look at uh, Sandbox Labs, you could see all sorts of things. Um, but what we want to do is go to the reservations and actually take a look at what we have here. This section is really important. So you want to read everything that's here. What you especially want to pay attention to is the VPN access tab where it will tell you how to access using a VPN connection and you want to download the Cisco AnyConnect VPN client software. Then it walks you through the process of connecting to your lab. So definitely make sure that you read this in order to be able to VPN in and access the gear that will be in the topology. I'm going to go through and set this up. I'll go back into instructions. If you want to not watch this setup section, you can go ahead and jump forward to the time that I've put on the screen for where I'm actually in to the lab connected to it and actually able to access the different devices. The first email we'll receive is from the lab provisioning automation engine, and it indicates that resources in the lab are in process of being provisioned and tested. Let's just know that the lab isn't ready yet. The second email will be sent to you when your lab is fully provisioned, tested and ready for you to connect to it. This email is where we'll find the information required by AnyConnect to establish the VPN connection to our lab. It gives us our network IP address, VPN username, and VPN password as well. Now down here, it talks to us about how to do the AnyConnect VPN. Now let's go ahead and click on this link to see what they're talking about. They again tell us to download and install it, giving us links to probably where to download it and a link on the instructions for installing. Once it's installed, then we can launch the client and we click on the gear icon here in the gear settings in the preferences. They want us to uncheck block connections to untrusted servers. I'm sure that there's many people out there that are uncomfortable with this. I'm sure that there's many security people out there that would probably pull their hair out if they saw you do this. So keep in mind that whenever you're going through this, it's, um, you know, you need to have your own discretion as to what you want to do and don't want to do. I'm perfectly fine doing this because it will prompt you that the, that the connection is untrusted and it's your choice as to whether or not you're going to, to move forward. Moving forward, we have the, it tells us about the email that, that we talked about already, which gives us the information we need to connect to the VPN. Then we connect, see, here's the prompt untrusted server. It's your choice to cancel the connection or to connect anyway. And then you enter your VPN credentials that you got for your email. And once the connection is good, you can see that there's a little lock icon there. You're connected. And then it lets you know that you can access your resources in the lab by either using uh, the lab's web portal, or you can make connections directly to devices by using tools such as putty or whatever other terminal applications you have. And then when you're done, you can disconnect. So I'm going to go through these and actually set it all up. I'm not going to record it though, because the directions are absolutely very clear. Once I'm connected, I'll start the recording again. I now have my VPN session established, which means that I can connect to the, to the lab now. And I'll click on this link to go to my Vril server. And as you can see, I'm logged in as guest. The credentials are here. The reason why I'm logged in as guest is because 
my simulations are actually associated with that particular account. And if we take a look at my simulations, we have the SD WAN option down here, which you could have even accessed it just from the overview page. Now you can see my different hosts and everything that I have, but I like to do the live visualization because it gives me essentially a topology with all of my different devices. Now you can see the different things that are here and I have my hosts, I have edge devices, I have the internet, whatever device I want to go into, I can just click on it. And then you can see that I can shut it down, trace from, ping from, telnet to zero zero or zero one. I'll telnet to zero zero. Hit enter while I'm here. And it wants the username. So we'll put in Cisco, password Cisco as well. Enable Cisco again. Now we can even just do like show IP interface brief. We can do show IP interface brief pipe exclude UN for unassigned. So now we're only looking at interfaces that have IP addresses. Show IP route will let us see some of our connections and we can ping around if we wanted to. But as you can see, we're actually jumping in and getting access to Cisco devices, official software as well. And we're not having to download any sort of application. It's very easy to access the devices. Everything is done in the web interface. So you don't need any software installed other than the AnyConnect client so that you can VPN in. But the good thing is that you don't have to go to any shady websites to download iOS files or download Packet Tracer. You don't have to go and get illegally shared files. Everything is on the up and up. Everything is legal. Everything is free as well going through this. So it's a really, really good resource. But for whatever reason, people just don't talk about it. There's so much good stuff here that you can do and, and there's really a lot of different things that you can go around and take a look at. You'd have to go through and familiarize yourself with everything on all these different interfaces, which is really not that big of a deal. I mean, you just, you just kind of jump in here and start messing around with things and, and doing whatever it is that you feel like doing. This is really a good resource just to jump in and test some commands or see what something looks like in an iOS, like an actual legit iOS. If you want to spin something up and, um, you know, not have to install a bunch of stuff on your local machine. One of the other really good things here is that you can get access to a uh, developer server. So here's the dev box and we can SSH to this. Now this dev box is great because it is a Linux box. So if you're not familiar with Linux, guess what? You just got yourself a Linux machine that you can hop into and play around with. You know what else is great about this Linux box? You have Python. Let me see if I can actually get into Python version three though. Nope, no Python version three, but that's okay. Having Python version two seven is good enough. You just are gonna miss out on some of the newer uh, syntax that you can do in version three. Let's jump into one of our other devices that we have here. Now we have our different IP addresses. I'm going to copy out this one, 172. 16, 30, 56. We'll hop back over to our putty session on our dev box and let's see if we can ping that IP address. And we can. So what's great about that? This means that we can create Python scripts and programs that are made for interfacing with Cisco devices. So if we wanted to just test something really quick, we can go in here, write up a Python script on our, lo on our local machine or wherever we want to do it. Then go into, um, our dev box here, paste the script, and then connect over to our device. Unfortunately, I abruptly lost my internet connectivity, which then resulted in me losing my VPN connection to the DevNet sandbox. Once I got my internet connectivity back, it took about a half an hour before I could get past this error message and actually connect to the VPN again. That's all out of the way, so I hop back into the DevNet box here, and I also log back into all of my simulations. Now I've got the dev box back open, and I'll show you how you can actually copy and paste a script that you wrote locally onto the developer box, because you may want to use a local IDE like PyCharm or whatever else you might uh, prefer. And so all we'll do here is we'll do VI, 
and I'll do ping.py. So now we can actually copy out a script that I have over here, which is not really anything special, but we'll just hit copy, get that out of the way. I forgot to, to do the import. So we'll go back up here and I will hit I, then we have to hit escape colon and then WQ, which means right quit. If we didn't, if we wanted to get out of here, we can hit bang Q and that just means quit without saving anything, but we'll do WQ meaning save it. Then we can do cat ping.py. We can see our script is here. Then we'll do Python ping.py. And you can see that it actually went out and pinged the machine. You can see that we have one packet transmitted, one packet received, 0% packet loss. You can see here where the reply is coming in. So not only do we get access to Cisco devices with Cisco iOS that is licensed and fully legal and fully free, but we also get access to a Linux machine that we didn't have to deal with all the installations. We didn't have to deal with all the IP routing and setting everything up. We can just deploy this simulation, hop in there, start writing scripts, start messing around in Linux, start messing around in Cisco iOS. So all of this is free, but you also get some lessons for learning. Let's go check out some of those lessons. We'll go back up here to DevNet. Let's now go into learning tracks. When you're on the VPN, everything goes a little bit slower. So I'll see if I can disconnect from that. And then check this out. They have so much stuff in here. They've got all these different modules. They've got um, labs that you can do over here. There's challenges. There's so much cool stuff here. A brief introduction to Git. You can go into some of the collaboration stuff. IoT, Internet of Things, networking, security. There's just so much stuff in here that's really cool. Actually, let me show you some of the list of things that I thought uh, was going to be of, of a lot of value. This one here is networking topologies and modules. You can go through the whole thing. They also have things for Napalm. They have RESTConf, understanding IP addresses. They've got intro to containers, Python for home labs. It's really just so much stuff in here. It's insane what all you can get. And it's also crazier how little people talk about this. It's free, it's a great resource. I highly recommend it. I think people should go check it out. And with that, I'll end the video here, but I'll be doing some other videos about great study resources. So please go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you wanna hear about those. And also don't forget to share these videos with other people that you think would find value in it as well. I'll see you in the next one.